Whoa. Welcome back to another installment of Engineering Money, the podcast where some full-time engineers give their two cents on the financial news of the week. My name is no. Ben. Ben, we changed it. What? We're just full-time engineers trying to survive the stock market. Whatever. We're just doing our best. Whatever. Because <laughs> we're just doing our best, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you're Ben. I'm Tim. And I'm Joey. engineer in Indianapolis. Joey's in Minneapolis. True. Good stuff. And uh, makes today is a very special episode. Uh, we are recording this live. Um, We're live, baby. In, in yeah. a... Can you feel the electricity <laughs> in the room? Yeah, so it's a Discord <laughs> it's for people that do investing stuff. Um so yeah, we'll we'll field some questions throughout the the discussion today. Um, catch us on our own Discord as well, link in the description. And then we are also recording this for YouTube now, um, so that that link will be down there as well if you're listening to us. Um, and if you're watching us, we also have like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that sort yeah. of fun stuff. So. Now, Joey, how much is this electricity fueled by your office bar behind you? <laughs> the office bar is a recent addition to the room, but let me tell you, I highly recommend for any workplace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're also sponsored by VinoVest. Um, if you're interested in wine investing, go check them out with the link we have in our description. Um, should be on the Spotify and on the, the YouTubes. Uh, and if you use that link, you get that uh, lower expense ratio, right? Yeah, I think so. For like the first year. It's pretty neat. Cool Solid stuff. information. All right. Let's get yes. into this. Oh. Well, yeah. No, I, I want to get something. Okay, yeah, you go, Tim. You, you guys know that I hate nickel. <laughs> <laughs> We're well aware. They are a fraud of a company. And what about I'm it? I'm sorry if you hold these shares of Nikola, <laughs> but <laughs> any what else is new, Tim? <laughs> um, so remember, it was like months ago or something that we talked about how GM had partnered with Nikola to build their Badger truck, mm. um, and they had like a they got like a stock um, stake in Nikola. Well, now this past week. GM announced that they dropped their plan to build the Badger um, and they are no longer taking stake in Nikola but they will still provide Nikola with fuel cells the hydrogen fuel cells so um, it looks like they don't want to have a large stake at all in Nikola Mm. they just want to be able to sell them the fuel cells and if it works out then okay but it yeah, their their stock took quite the dive this past week, which I always love to see. Yeah, I can see that here. They, they give you just real excitement through the week, Tim. Oh yeah. But yeah, that's that's why I wanted to say, Nicola. You can, you can go back to what you were going to say, Ben. Well, I didn't have much to say in that moment, but um, <laughs> okay. so what I wanted to talk about this week, I know we've talked about it before, um, the fear and greed index. Which is yes. which is an indice provided by uh, I think it's C yeah CNN Business, um, and it's all about what figuring out what emotions are driving the markets right now, and we reached like an all time high almost for the year, at so it's a scale from zero to a hundred, and if you're listening in, it's just zero is extreme fear. 100 is extreme greed and ever since last week we are now in a period of extreme greed then if you scroll down you can see um the index over time to the bottom Ooh. oh the momentum pull call. keep going keep going keep going market volatility oh yeah 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 so oh yeah so we are at Ju- July. Near the end, the beginning yeah. of the year levels. Right. Wow. <laughs> and so, so yeah, beginning of the year, we should point out we were at even more extreme greed, which makes sense. It had been the longest bull run in history. Yeah. 
then of course we drop down to near zero extremist fear you can get because of the coronavirus obviously well it is important to point out that this swings wildly like if you even have like a small drop it'll still go down or not a small drop but you don't have to have um a drop like we had at the beginning of the year for it to go down to extreme fear it's because right. people I mean, are afraid at the beginning of 2019 it was at the same level yeah and there wasn't anything crazy going on there because remember this is it's an oscillator right it's not an indicator mm -hmm. so the absolute value isn't important it's relative to where it was before so like that zero is as low as it goes it bottoms out it doesn't matter if people are more afraid now than they were before it's still just at a zero but now we should point out it's not at a zero now it's it's at almost a, a all-time high for the year and uh this this well that's not an all-time this high. indicator once you get up to the extreme greed you can you have pretty solid basis to say that um it'll it'll drop it doesn't it last doesn't very last long. very long up there yeah and what the old saying is um buy when others are fearful mm -hmm. and no 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 it's be greedy when others are fearful yep. be fearful when others are greedy. yes that's what that's is. a warren buffett quote and that's yes. definitely where this index got yeah. its name so like this last week yeah. was a great week everything was up people are buying it up um not everything was up like gold was down so mm -hmm. doing some yeah but when when this well, that's kind is... of expected, right? That's kind of comforting, honestly, to finally see things moving the way you expect. When stocks go up, gold goes down, because people aren't trying to put their money into that safe haven of gold mm -hmm. or bonds. Um, yeah, but, but over this past year, we've seen crazy things like everything's down, stocks and bonds and gold at the same time. And so it's nice to see them do what you expect. I guess, but my boy KL has been suffering. Yeah. Yes, that's a, an unfortunate casualty Which, I mean, of the gold sell -off. I think <sighs> now that it's starting to go down, it's a good time to get that cost averaging through. Cause, yeah. yeah, I'm 100%. I'm not yeah. I'm not about to sell out of this. It's, oh, yeah. It's a set of discount. Yep, exactly. But, you know, whenever I see this index below less than 50, I feel good about, you know, buying mm -hmm. stocks. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I wanted to point out, Ben, if you can bring up um, the unemployment report oh, of course. that's come out just this past Thursday. Oh, I don't have the report. I, it, I just it, have a chart. That's all right. The, the graph is the interesting bit. But that's like, I think it speaks to where we are in the market right now, seeing um, this extreme greed. If you notice the graph right here, if I just try to describe it, we had this constant downward slope. <laughs> over the past 10 years the hugest spike in history because of the coronavirus everyone going into quarantine people laid off unemployment spiked and it's dropping down with almost the same velocity and i think <clears throat> that drop this this kind of realizing that the economy can still work even with coronavirus going on has made a lot of people bullish and that's where we get this extreme greed index what i'm think is interesting though is we're not dropped back down all the way we still have a lot of people unemployed and it's kind of petering out. It's it's kind of finding an equilibrium level within a, a world pre-vaccine. Sure. Yeah, and I think like the uh, the blue collar jobs, it's easier to, you know, just hire those people back. But then with the white collar jobs, it takes a little bit more time mm -hmm. for those people to find new, like my brother got laid off, you know, at the beginning um, cause he works in, he worked in oil. He's a geologist and it took him until just now to find a new job. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was trying to see if any of these other charts might, Oh, employment but by I, industry. I do think it's interesting because we're still really bullish, even though the virus is at levels higher than it was in the first wave. Mm hmm. And like I have a friend who's a nurse and he says that the hospitals in Indianapolis are at levels of COVID patients higher than in March. Right. I know back in South Bend, 
hospital beds are they're at like 120 percent capacity it's but, it's yeah. really not a, a good situation right now no one seems to care anymore and it's like okay well we we've lived with this in the economy for this far it's fine everyone can be bulls again and then you know how how's it how high is it gonna go when the vaccine starts getting rolled out well god the, i think the thing is this spike here is because of vaccine news it's all been incredibly positive uh pfizer and moderna have come out with great numbers these like up 90 or 95 percent uh efficacy in the vaccine it's like holy cow that's great news but then people forget how long six months will really feel when that's how long it takes to roll out a vaccine mm -hmm. that's why i don't know seeing the green, green index this high the unemployment numbers are not dropping back to where they were they're really leveling off and which shows we're still in this this downturn this economic downturn and on top of that the virus is only getting worse it continues to spread as the holidays you know cause yeah. spreading events and it hasn't even I'm, been two weeks after thanksgiving yeah i'm de definitely ready to be fearful as others are greedy <laughs> <laughs> so i just pulled yeah. up um employment change by industry the one month number um and from the looks of it, it looks like government and retail trade are the two industries that are still seeing the biggest struggles of getting back employment. Most other industries are slowly going back. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised to see the, well, I guess service providing is kind of broad. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. To be so high. But well but speaking of well i don't want to jump too far you could hurt yourself and fall yeah be careful tim <laughs> um but speaking of services <laughs> how about our favorite software as a service company snowflake snowflake oh yes they got their earnings call, right? Snowflake, I saw a news article last week that says Snowflake is now the most expensive software company listed. Yeah, it was brought to my attention that, I mean, we're used to stocks with crazy high uh, P.E. ratios with Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wait. No, it's a P.S. Price to sales? Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Which is, you know, it, it's a subtle difference, but it's like yeah, that's just price to sales is just revenue. how much money are they actually bringing in, where price yeah. to earnings is more how much money are they actually making. Okay, but anyways, I'm looking at, so Salesforce, they, of all the big software as a service companies, so there's like Salesforce, ServiceNow, Workday, um, Shopify, you know, you can, can like Zoom, the, Shopify and Zoom are pretty hot ones. Mm -hmm. um, but Salesforce has a PS ratio of 8.86. Zoom, which is extremely hyped, has a PS ratio of almost 90. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Over tenfold. And wow. <laughs> Snowflakes is about 200 right now. Which I That's... think it, it was obscured because remember when they IPO'd and it was supposed to be at like hundred and twenty dollars when originally it was supposed yeah. to be 90 yeah it was one of those that just kept getting raised even pre-ipo and then the day that they were stocks were available for like retail it was like 250 or yeah something. it like doubled again and and we should point out here that even at its original estimate for the ipo it was slated to be the biggest ipo of the mm -hmm. year yeah yep. so like even if they double their revenue by next year and the stock doesn't grow at all they would still have a higher ps ratio than zoom oh my gosh so <laughs> and zoom is so hyped i mean zoom yeah. is what that's everywhere that's because, become a thing yeah like it's the the software of covid basically right so i mean I only well, have just, one share of snow of snowflake because I was required to get one because I <laughs> we all hyped it I up. Said that I would. 
so i mean i'm not gonna sell it but i don't know i would not be surprised if it fell but just uh, something one of those comparisons you brought up tim was, was uh um salesforce and they just yeah. bought or or in the process of buying slack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that i was surprised that drove their price down yeah well slack's been i mean we talked about it a bit before they've been like ruthlessly attacked by microsoft yeah. uh coming yeah. out with microsoft teams ever since their ipo and they they've been floundering a bit but it, it's been a volatile stock and so i think it's just kind of a it's a big move for salesforce well i but, i think it'll be good because they can i mean they can have it as part of their software package for their clients right. Um, and Slack is nice. I mean, I've, I've used Slack. It's a really efficient, especially for uh, developers, people who work with code. Slack is yeah. phenomenal. It's pretty good. But yeah, but the thing I'm getting out of this is Salesforce seems like the best value for a software as a service uh, company right now, at least one of the big ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I pulled up the chart for you, Tim, the comparison. Yes. Since Snowflake IPO'd, Salesforce is down almost 10%. While well, they've gone up, Snowflake has gone up Perfect like timing. 50%. So, mm -hmm. and well, Tim, you know this brings up one of my favorite trading strategies that I like to employ. If if you think there's something that's going to be moving similarly within the market, but one of them is better than the other, buy one, short the other one. And then regardless of what software is doing in general, going up or down, as long as you pick the right stock, you're making money. There you go. Well, that's a good, a yeah. good hedge. As long as you pick the right stock, you make money, Joey. That's how the stock market works. <laughs> but the point is you can ignore the broader market. As long as between okay. those two, you picked the right one. It hedges against other, other types of risk. Because, like we said, we might be fearful right now because everyone else is greedy <laughs> and tech stocks are going to be the first to die. But if you still want to in choose the right tech stock, just buy mm -hmm. that one and shorten yeah, another we're, one. Yeah, we're talking about the reverse fear and greed index where it's just inverted <laughs> because you're, you're fearful what other people are doing. Right. We're fearful of the greed index. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Um, oh, but Joey, did yes. you hear the news about CRISPR this week? Tell me. They announced that their gene editing treatment, um, with it, they were able to cure a patient of sickle cell anemia. Whoa. Holy cow. So they've had stuff in the past i can't remember what it was but they've been able to cure people of other diseases mm -hmm. in the past but this is the first one that is um you know like actually peer-reviewed right um so first time gene editing has cured a genetic disease in a patient and you know i mean the crispr stocks have had a pretty great year but now like their technology has actually been validated that's study. crazy. And just to be clear, Tim, when you say CRISPR did this, are we talking about the company CRISPR Therapeutics? Yeah, or the it was actually technology the company, CRISPR. It was the actual company CRISPR Therapeutics, but okay. in general, the CRISPR stocks, you know, they've done pretty well this year. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I mean, I am like, to me, it's a no brainer. Like, this is technology of the future. And it's it's got such huge potential here, mm -hmm. like curing genetic diseases. That's something that was impossible ten years ago, not even thought of. And now that we have companies like companies, publicly traded companies, doing it, it's like I don't know which one of them is going to be the most successful. But buy all of them. There's four big ones right now. Yeah. If, if and, one of them goes as big as we think they will, it doesn't matter if all the other ones go bankrupt. You're making money on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually found a ETF. It's the ARC uh, Geno Genomic Revolution ETF, Ooh. which is managed by our superstar, uh, Kathy Wood. Ooh, nice. But, yeah. 
So that's a good one to look at. Arc G. They're pretty high right Arc now. Arc G, Look. baby. Yeah. yeah, they are pretty high. When did they IPO? Oh, 20, 2017? That's crazy. I mean, is it considered an IT, an IPO for an ETF? Uh, I don't know how that's... What, what is the correct term for when an ETF goes live? Well, it is an initial offering to the public. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true <laughs> so maybe we should just call it that it was the initial offering available to the public to buy this yeah i guess ben. if you want to get technical <laughs> i guess yeah that's pretty cool um yeah i have one other etf that we can talk about real quick Do um it. bring it up qcln <laughs> This is the First Trust NASDAQ Clean Edge Green Energy Index Fund. Um, and I've been thinking about buying more lately. I bought them earlier this year. And it's so I know high. it's very high right now. But I'm thinking about buying even more um, once, uh -huh. the, once the Fear and Greed Index kind of <laughs> levels right. out a little bit. Because obviously it's crazy right now. But um, thinking beyond the vaccine once we get back to some semblance of normalcy what is sort of the issues that we're going to turn to and for me based off of the election results and just where we're at in the world i think clean energy and and like climate change and environmental stuff will turn to be one of the primary focuses once we get past the pandemic mm -hmm. um so i'm looking because with clean energy and and other environmental stuff it's it's difficult to find individual stocks um mm -hmm. to invest in because they're all kind of the same a lot of them so i really like right. this index fund um based on their holdings and i haven't looked at them recently but i do remember um, they had even like Tesla and stuff was their top holder. Okay. Um, <laughs> classic. Yeah. But they, they, they do a good job. It's not all just like solar and wind companies. They're, they're pretty right. well balanced for all things that are good but, for the environment. Ben, while we're talking about clean energy, one specific stock I do want to bring up is be oh bloom energy Yo, you brought up be last week <laughs> yeah but it did well this week bloom energy deserves to be talked about uh, every day joey they're Spe almost there yeah specifically this past year I, I forget the exact date that they did it but they acquired a um hydrogen fuel cell company and they've been excelling since then they they had a rough start after their ipo but they are uh, on the heckin' rise, guys. I do like Bloom Energy. They make some really cool stuff. But, Joey, we already talked about it so much. I know. I just I just wanted to bring it up and and just, like, I, I bought into their IPO, so I feel like It's because baby. you're a bag and holder and you well, want people to, to inflate it. the price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pump stocks. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> All right, Nifty. Speaking of... Oh yeah, you go, Tim. Go, oh, Tim. No, you go, Ben. I would. I just said Nifty. Oh, okay. <laughs> nifty. I, actually, I guess... Oh, also, I there's construction going on right next to my house. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Dan? I don't hear any of it. Okay, good. My house shakes sometimes. Like the whole house. Is it Dan? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes he does construction on our mm. house, but. Um, okay. Bitcoin. Oh my gosh. I'm Ooh, glad yes. you brought that up. Let's pull it okay, up. Okay, so. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Bloomberg came out with an intelligence research report. And. They said that their their range for the price of Bitcoin in 2021 is ten thousand dollars to fifty thousand yeah. dollars. 
that's that's such yep. a huge range. I know. That's a huge range, but they're also all high numbers. It's not saying it's gonna tank back to the one thousands. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, if you look it... at ten thousand on this graph, that's kind of like the average for the past three yeah, years. Bi of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has gone off the rails. Like they are back to where they peaked in 2017 yeah, that peak that made the infamous bitcoin yeah yeah but isn't bitcoin supposed to be a currency yes correct though these do not seem like um something that's perfectly normal for something that wants to be a currency well we live in an age where nothing is normal tim um it's true let uh, me let me just also have add used car prices gone back down yet <laughs> Actually, they, they are starting to get Let me down. just throw oh, okay. in Maybe gold. we can start looking for normalcy. <laughs> um, At least my car's value, but it's also very uh, old as I look for another yeah, car. Yeah. Maybe in commodities. I was looking at um, the Carvana sell you car things. I'm like, how convenient is that? They'll just come up and make an offer and pick up my car for me. But... The offer, like my Kelly Blue Book value, is like my car's worth four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I'm like, okay, cool. Carvana would buy it for three hundred dollars. We'll just do GLD. I'm like, well, well, yeah, they're just like a dealership. Like, they're gonna give you like a terrible offer because they want to make yeah, the money. It's it's super convenient, but it's not that much more convenient. Yeah, that's the problem with it. I still the best way to sell a car is just private seller because then you get the most money but it's the most work for you makes sense but yeah i mean i figure when the weather gets nice again i'll go on a nice road trip take a scenic picture of my car put that on <laughs> my facebook marketplace picture or whatever That'll work. so so back to bitcoin for a second here i pulled up a comparison uh bitcoin to gold um mm -hmm. basically for the year to date and yeah, there was a period in March here where gold actually was outperforming Bitcoin, which is right. when gold was king. Ben, you just can't beat that digital gold. I know. So, and, and here's gold. the thing. Bitcoin, one huge reason why its resurgence is happening. This was in a Barron's article this week. Um, there are a lot of old money investors, like old boomer people. Hedge funds. Who are starting to like actually find Bitcoin attractive and a good bet yeah. to hedge against inflation and stuff now. They're like putting it on the same mm -hmm. level as gold. Like they 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 talk about how obviously there's they they're still investing in gold, but they've also added positions in Bitcoin now. It's come to this threshold where now even even the older generations where all most of the money is are starting to find it like a good idea so yeah and can i just point out that uh back this past father's day what prediction one of us made if you recall father's what day did you say joey conspiracy theory special <laughs> and i specifically brought up that bitcoin is the only way that we can overthrow the oh world gosh. and the illuminati <laughs> Um. <laughs> Good call, so Joey. Saying we're headed towards a, uh, a revolution, Joey. It's happening. The signs are all here. I can't wait. Good stuff. Well. Well, actually, oh, hold on, Ben. There's a uh, interesting comparison that I wanted to show. Was if you pull up KL again um, and specifically compare it to the price of gold. And I think it's just an interesting, when we talk about this and we talk about how we can hedge against inflation and looking at things like gold as a source for that. Oh, specifically, we, we talked about before how you know gold miners are a different way to invest in gold than buying the gold ETF or whatever. But comparing oh wow this one as an example to the price of gold it's almost follows it but dilate here let me let me go and to I march found, here but if you can find i think oh i forget the name of it 
but it's like a a two times gold leveraged ETF. I forget the name of the ETF, but it just follows the price of gold daily yeah. doubled, mm-hmm. the, the percent change. And it at that actually follows KL even closer. So KL is almost just doing double dilated price of gold. Yeah. And they give a dividend. Mm-hmm. That's the best part. Yeah. So like year to date, um, oops, I'm going the wrong way. KL's looking pretty attractive since it's down. Um, but poised to slingshot back yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. That could be a good play. Gold is always going to be a good play. Yeah. KL every quarter sends me a physical booklet that talks about their like <laughs> investor relations in the yeah, mail. Yeah. That's how you know. And that's, you know, that keeps me holding. <laughs> <laughs> they wine and dine you. <laughs> they invite me to their investor conference in Toronto. You should go. I they specifically asked they said like here it is you're invited but please don't come there's a pandemic <laughs> oh okay interesting when there's not though you should go yeah i i do i that's like on my bucket list now i want to go to a kl investor <laughs> nice <meeting. laughs> oh man okay i think we should call it there i don't have anything else to talk yep. about uh thanks everybody for tuning in this week. week thanks everybody who listened in live in the discord um And yeah, we will uh, see you next week. Sleep good, everyone.